So good morning, everyone that have joined us today. Um, in, in today's webinar, we have uh, Keith Egan from Astico. He's a business manager for the franchise and uh, has been working with real estate business owners to train them in, and, and, you know, and be a part of uh, the Astico family. Our guest speaker is uh, Yulia Nykovskian and she has joined us today. Uh, she is the sales coach and runs her own sales training uh, business uh, called Sales Masterclass. Uh, Keith, can you introduce you, yourself to us, please? Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Keith Egan. I'll be hosting this webinar with uh, Julia. As Joel said, I'm, I work for Astico as a franchise business manager. I've been working with Astico for the last three years and I've been involved in real estate for probably the last 20 years, both in the UK and the UAE. Um, my role is really to help people who are setting up their franchise business in the UAE or across the Middle East. Um, um, this is where I've uh, gained my experience um, in helping and uh, um, supporting people who want to get, I want to jump into real estate. Um, Julia is the co-host today of, with me. Julia has actually been involved in real estate as a commercial director for seven years before she set up uh, her own sales uh, consultancy sales training, which we call sales masterclass. Julie is working with us, Deco, as our um, consultant in relation to training, and we've invited her today um, to share the knowledge that she has um, in real estate and real estate business um, on there. So to, uh, to jump in on that, that's myself and Julia. Julia, do you want to say anything at this time? Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Really nice to meet all of you. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a sales coach. My main activity is to teach, train sales teams to, to perform better through trainings, through strategies. And uh, there is a very popular topic right now from entrepreneurs and from uh, sales representatives. Is it the right time to join them? Uh, real estate companies the right time to build a new uh, company. So I guess this topic is going to be really relevant so we can discuss and share it today. Uh, yeah, indeed, I do train uh, Astico real estate and actually I do train uh, companies in different industries. So I'm going to share with you my views uh, post pandemic, post lockdown, what is going on now in uh, different industries and uh, how are the situation uh, even in different countries so I, I hope you're going to be fine and very useful for all of you we can start. okay thank you julia so today what we're going to cover today is is this a, a good time to jump into real estate and the first thing that we need to cover really is what's what's the real estate market like right now uh, locally and i think there's been lots and lots of webinars over the last few months about real estate about that is but i think Today's webinar is not about what the real estate is like. The webinar really is, is the right time to jump in. And that can be in terms of uh, starting your own business. Do I want to take a job in there? Do I want to expand my business? And that's really what we're going to come to at the end. And we're going to give you our ideas and give you some, uh, some information really that can help you and teach you in terms of what you need to do if you do want to get involved in real estate. But I think the first thing that we do really need to cover is, okay, where is the market at um, right now in terms of um, the pandemic? So what, what's it looking like right now? There's lots of information that's out there, and I think it's probably, um, to start with, uh, you know, transactions is a great place. And a lot of information out there right now tells us that the transactions are really coming back to the post-pandemic levels. Um, and I think if you want to take a look at previous recessions that we've had and difficult times, financial crisis, you'll see that there is a lot of opportunity that comes from that. The market is always up, the market is always down. And a lot of people in, in, uh, in who invest in real estate, for example, will be looking right now to buy because the prices are, are, are low, they're probably hitting around about the cost of construction. So they're really not going to move too much uh, lower. And now is a good time. And the guys with the, with the cash in the bank are the guys who can take a real advantage of the market right now and pick up the bargains. You look at some of the deals that the, the, the developers are putting out there, 
it's a great time for end users. You know, we're seeing a lot of movement from people from apartments they want to look at and they want to move into some sort of soft space. You look at a lot of the developments now that are happening around Dubai. You look at like the, you know the Dubai land, the stretch from from uh, up to Quem Street, starting with the new Dubai Hills through Arabian Ranches, all the way up to Townsquare and around Serena and places like this. They're seeing a great level of activity because they're really good value, um, and people are thinking instead of you know I'm going to pay some rent maybe it's a good time for me to look at uh, getting my own place. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, in the market. What do you think, Julia, on that? Well, I think that um, this is like a classic case scenario, yeah? After every recession, after every um, economy, you know, break, there's always a huge growth, yeah? And uh, yeah. we can see how it was in 2008, nine, and all, big and good companies in UAE was built after that. Yes, like uh, also, and also Better Homes and many others. Everyone who actually succeed were those who um, did an effort while everything was low. Also, um, as I see from whatever, you know, I, I talk with business owners, investors, everyone are trying to, to get, you know, to the, the to get the best out of it, you know? So people, somebody is demotivated, but somebody see opportunities. So yeah, I guess uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, it, it, it will grow anyhow, but important is uh, to see which mindset people have. I think that's, that's a good point because I think what's happened through the pandemic as well, some companies have actually thrived in that environment. Some people have, have, have suffered in that environment those people that have really embraced the technology they've got the virtual viewings they've worked hard they they've taken the permits they've uh, found ways in which they can still complete the transaction of course all the dubai uh, real estate or the land department moved a lot of things online as well so i think you know there's um there's still the opportunity that's 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 there i think you remember depend, the guy depend on our mindset the guy that closed the deal in the uh, Carrefour, that's amazing story because the only way how he could go out uh, is to get a permit and he closed the deal with the client in Carrefour because this is the only way he can meet the client. This is fantastic. I think it's, uh, when, this is the, the actual, you know, um, when people are giving everything they can to their work. And, uh, I, was and I, think, I think also as well, some of the things that you have where you've got, um, People talking about Expo 2021 was the thing that, you know, or 20, not 2021, you know, is that negative or positive? Well, in some ways, it's actually allowed the developers to slow down some of the release, which is balancing the demand and supply, and will give us that lead up to 2021 that's still going to happen. And I think, you know, yeah. post 2021 and on to 22, it's going to be quite, you know, interesting to see where the real estate market's going to go. A lot of people are talking about the fact that, you know, that we're in the bottom of the U and the pandemic has, has, has made the U a little bit deeper. Yeah. And I think really what people are talking about is, um, if, we, if we look at the next slide, is this a V, is it a U or a V-shaped recovery? Mm -hmm. And I think mostly when you look at it, the sharp decline is obviously through the pandemic, but I think everybody is probably coming on the side of the fact that right now, the early signs that we've got in the first few months into lockdown, we're seeing a V recovery. We're seeing things bounce back pretty quickly. I just think with, with the UAE uh, or Dubai in particular as well, it really depends on how that other industries are going to come back from that to see what happens with, you know, are people going to find jobs here? What does? Because some people are going to leave the UAE with the jobs or Dubai with the jobs. So that's really going to be quite interesting to see and I think that's the only caution I would sit there and say is how quick can the other businesses recover um, and I think that's going to be a key point in the next few months which will see how fast that v-shape is going to be well you know people are divided in, in, in two parts and I think everyone would agree with me here you know somebody feels uh opportunities somebody feels very motivated they see a lot of stuff that they can do they see benefits uh, others are of course opposite they're stressed they are demotivated they try to shut down or they just wait until uh 
something will change from outside until government gonna do something and so on. So obviously this is gonna affect, yes, yeah? somebody gonna have the U shape, so it's gonna take longer uh, when they're gonna be low. And, uh, but somebody who is more active, they just gonna, uh, you know, uh, grow faster. Also, it's, it's uh, related to the industries, yes? Like uh, if we talk about real estate, it's more, uh, obviously it's gonna be a V-shape because everyone still needs houses. We have to stay at home. So <laughs> we have to have a home and that's obvious uh, is the case. But if we talk to about leisure and travel or we talk to restaurant industry, entertainment, um, you know, theaters, uh, concerts, this that kind of stuff or sports might take a bit longer because it's it's not so safe. So um, if we talk about real estate, most probably is going to be a, a V shape. I actually would say that real estate suffer least from uh, this situation because uh, agents were still working. Yeah, like people were still doing activities du during the lockdown. So they didn't shut down completely their um the work yeah so uh yeah the recovery seems to be much more um you know active rather than in other uh, directions okay so i think from there we've covered our thoughts on what we think where we are at the real estate and the real question of the seminar now is you know is it a good time to uh to get into real estate um and i think we've said before i think they're um there are some really good examples from the last uh, financial um, crisis that we had, where you see a lot of companies that are still operating here in Dubai who started just before or just after the last financial crisis. Yeah. I think real estate is always, always going to be there. And I think we made the, the, the point before as well that from, from this lockdown, people could still continue to work in real estate. It's not like the, you know, the malls closed. It's, you know, uh, restaurants closed, but real estate still continued. People still needed to find a way or they still needed to have their, their home, their place. And I think even now you've seen such uh, a kick up or such a pent up demand that's come out now. People are really looking you know, what their next move is gonna be. There are people looking to reduce expenses, which means they've got to move, they've got to lease something. And people want to get that space that they didn't have during the lockdown. So I think it's a fairly resilient industry in terms of, you know, if, it, if it's a good market or a bad market, like you've just said, people still need to have a home. People are still going to need to look to invest. There's always an opportunity there, even if the markets, the markets are high in terms of the, the prices for sale, people are going to rent and the people who can afford are going to buy the houses and rent it to the people who can't afford it. The prices are low. Those people are going to rent or are they going to look to buy? Or the investors are going to come in anyway and buy because they're going to get a great return on investment. There's always a winner, I think, in, in real estate, always. In that. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? And, and, and investors, like I know people who are trying to get, uh, you know, cash, liquidity, so they can buy as soon as possible, you know, uh, distressed deals because there are lots of distress deals. And to us as uh, agents, as uh, agencies, we don't really care much about the price. The fact is that the transaction is still going on, so we still can, you know, uh, make profits. So uh, as a real estate company, we have now the time to do business. Uh, as I remember in 2008, 2009, 2000, until 2013, everything was growing and real estate companies was getting crazy amount of money like that this was the, the best time when when we were uh you know earning so uh yeah investors are buying on the low market we all know that uh so um, i don't think there is something that should stop us and uh, you know change it that the idea to go into real estate market right now okay so the first kind of thing is um <clears throat> should i get a job in real estate what do you think on that one? I'll let you start on this one. Of course. Um, yes, this is my, my favorite part because, uh, as, I, as I said, I was in real estate for um, seven years. I was a commercial director. I used to hire everyone myself, so I used to do a lot of interviews. And um, real estate job is amazing. It's very stable. 
Yeah, even like, as we mentioned before, even do, during the lockdown, if we say, if we know that Emirates uh, fired a lot of uh, people, like they had to, to shorten the staff, a lot of restaurants, hospitality, real estate didn't really fire anyone because uh, everyone around commission. So that's a safe job. Uh, that, that, that's a job that you always will have um, work. The only thing is that uh, you need to understand the risks when you are into real estate. It's not a nine to six job, and it's not a job that you need to, you know, you just can chill, have coffee, and, uh, you know, get salary. No, real estate job is about massive action, and it's about a lot of uh, efforts. And of course, this is paid much more than other jobs. Uh, because, like, uh, as me as a sales coach, uh, if I choose any job, uh, any job in sales from everywhere, obviously I'm going to use the job where I can get the highest commission and the highest commission I get in real estate that the more expensive property I sell, the more I earn. So yeah, it's a, it's a good job in real estate, but very important, you need to know two factors. One, uh, you have to be ready for challenges and you have to be persistent. And two, you have to be educated in terms of sales. Me as a sales coach, of course I have to say this uh, to be educated to learn about the profession yeah like how we don't go to be doctors without having a university uh, you know medical university the same way we shouldn't go to a real estate job with a random approach yeah like we have to prepare ourselves for the job we have to be professional what we are doing and this is vital because if you there are lots of real estate agents on the market and all of you uh, here at some point, try to rent a property. And at some point, you met not professional salesperson, right? So if you want to be successful in real estate, you have to be professional, not only in terms of knowing the buildings, the areas, the developers, but also knowing uh, your job to how to sell it right. So yes, to go into real estate, yes, but make sure that you have a right mindset that you're prepared for that. Okay, I can give you one example. Recently, I was doing some interviewing um, to hire some agents, and a guy came, a chap came to me. We did an interview. He'd been with No Bank for twelve years, and one of the questions I asked was, you know, what do you think is your biggest mistake you've made, and what did you learn? And he said, I was too comfortable. I was getting a salary. I was there for twelve years. Pandemic came. I lost my job. He said, I want to work in real estate. I want to work in real estate because of a few things. One, it's commission, generally it's commission only, and the commissions are very good. So I can make a lot of money. If I don't have a salary, they're not going to fire me because I'm not going to cost them any money. So yeah. I want this opportunity to make as much money as I can. I feel more secure. And, you know, the biggest mistake I made was being laid back and thinking this is fine. So, you know, and I think I kind of agreed with that. And he's now working with the Stico, actually. So I think the guy's going to be successful in that. But I think, um, yes, you're right. That's the thing that we try and get people to understand. Yes, it's real estate. But I think we, there are so many bad agents that are around. It's not easy to, not so difficult, sorry, to stand out from those other people. You know, we've all come across our interactions with agents here who are quite happy to make, you know, a bit of money and, and survive in Dubai, and that's a question I always ask, are you here to make money or here to make just enough money? There is a difference. And I think 100%. if people take this on as a profession, they can really, you know, be successful. There are people that, you know, are banking more than a million dirhams a year in real estate as agents who know their profession, who work hard. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know any other profession when an agent can buy an apartment in Dubai after one or two years working. No any other uh, job going to give you this possibility. But here you can close a deal and uh, on commission you can buy a property, in fact. So, yeah, you're right. Okay. If we're already involved in our real estate business, is it a great time to expand? And I think on this one, um, there are a couple of factors that you have that I think people need to do. When you look around at some of the businesses, and I look at successful businesses here in, in, uh, in real estate, the ones that are maybe not so successful, I think there's a couple of things that are really key to that, which is, is, is the recruitment of the agents and what we do with our marketing. And I think there are really two key elements that you have, because people tend to sometimes think, well, it's commission only, so it's not going to cost me anything, so I hire somebody to take them on. 
And then after three months, you realize, okay, this is not going to be great. And I think, you know, there's one company out there that actually put out that they think that the cost of recruitment for a successful agent can be as much as 50,000 dirham. Yeah. Because of all the ones that don't make it, they have to pay all those costs, those visa costs. So I think really, so the recruitment is massively key. And I think the three things that you look at there, and I think if we um, probably go and have a look at the next one, it really comes around building a team. You've got to look at that recruitment, the training. And I think the things we talk about in recruitment are intelligence, character, coachability. You know, intelligence is something that is you can't teach. Character is you want that person's got to have that will to succeed. And you said before, Huli, it takes 10 times the effort you think. And I think you need people who have that character think, I'm willing to put that 10 times the effort in to make a success of this. And I'm really driven and determined. And the third thing, coachability. There are a lot of people within real estate who think they know everything, but <laughs> we still need to learn. And uh, we, there's a lot that we can learn something every day. And if we've got, if, if your company or your business has got a successful system and way to do it, these people need to understand and learn from that. Yeah. Well, about expansion, the, 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 the previous slide you were talking about, you're right. So people have to understand whenever you expand, it's the right time to expand. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, why? First of all, because uh, people, a lot of companies are closing, yeah, uh, due to the, of course, due to the lockdown, due to the uh, shortage of income. Yeah, so um, it means that competition is a little bit lower than it was before. And at the same time, the demand is still there. People are still there. People are still renting apartments. People are still buying, uh, selling, and so on. Um, so to expand, yes. But it's very important to expand wisely, yes. So to not just hire people, just give them a laptop or a phone. This is not what needed. Uh, people need marketing. People need support from the team. Yeah, people need... Uh, from the management people need the training people need enough marketing yesterday i had an interview when i asked a very successful and good agent what do you need from me he said i need just marketing i don't need anything just give me enough leads and i'm gonna close yeah and this is the right approach this is what a company should provide to real estate agent company have to give full support to the team so they have enough um leads enough prospects to work with uh, and of course, to generate their own. Yes. So expansion, yes, but it should be right one. It should be done wise and it should, uh, we should understand our, you know, capabilities. Can we extend at that level that we can provide to everyone? You know, l like in a family, yeah? Like if you grow the family, you have to understand, can you handle everything that goes in, in it? The same in a company, like it's not just to make a visa. It's not just a visa cost or just a, a laptop cost. It's also uh, to provide them enough possibilities to earn. And, and in terms okay. of hiring, yes, to hire right people, not, not, not just anyone. In Dubai, there is a big problem. This is what I don't like. If you don't get a job, if you don't have a job, or if you want to change a profession, I'm going to go to real estate. Anyone going to hire in real estate? Because real estate is easier. Uh, there is no basic... Uh, everyone going to hire, and there are lots of real estate companies that truly hire anyone just to, to get people on board. So if we consider ex expanding, we need to understand who we're taking on the team. You have the next slide about it. I think as well on there, a lot of companies, you see good successful companies, they do have a recruitment strategy. They have a very precise recruitment strategy. One of the things that they do is they do promote themselves through the digital uh, yeah. social media and the platform to say that you know we're a great company to work for this is what's happened all these people are successful they're promoting their successes and that's really what you need to do to attract good agents you need to, to, to increase your profile if you're you know you want to expand you've got to look at you know uh, expanding your profile as well getting your company name out there it's not just about winning clients to close deal it's actually about attracting good agents that are going to help you be successful. 100%. Like I know a lot of uh, entrepreneurs in Russia, um, well, I had a you know, conversation. I was like, uh, why do you do this? You are earning millions. Like, why do you do all this social media? Why do you waste this time, you know, to go on the stage to talk about it? And he, he told me, yes, it takes a lot of time, but uh, 
being that active, people knowing me, this gives me a possibility to hire right people in my company. Yeah, so like I like Elon Musk. Yeah, everyone want to work in Tesla because he's cool and he's talented. He's smart. Uh, of course, he does it because he wanna. He wanna not not only to get his ego happy. Yeah, it's about having right people working with him. So of course, it's true. And I think people have to look at everything that you you expand your team. Everybody needs to understand that in the team we're focused on on success focused on revenue everything we do the way that you know people customer service operate the way your admin operates you know these guys have got to make sure we've got the best listings we've got the best quality we're handling our leads properly because this is all focused on the one thing revenue everybody needs to understand you can't spend money until you've earned the money and that's where i think some people need to really understand the importance of the sales yeah you know that it's massively important to the business as well and everyone needs to support that and have a focus on that okay mm -hmm. so we think and i think looking at that recruitment and training what we're saying is that we we we, we believe these are massively the key components that leads to creating a successful business and i think we can see the proof of that across the real estate in uh, the local real estate here there are companies who really stand out in what they in what they do in terms of how they approach their recruitment, their marketing, etc. And I think you know if somebody is going to the question is is it a good time to expand? It, 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 I think the the thing to get across is it isn't just about hiring more agents. I think you know you've got to look at how to support and how to do that. And yes, there are still the the whole hard real estate companies who are looking for agents who say bring your clients and bring your and close your deals. I'm not going to give you any support or marketing. And I think those companies are the ones that are really not surviving today. In yeah, I also can say due to my experience, like uh, you guys uh, hired me to, to, to coach head office, yeah, like a uh, SICO. So, and obviously I can see the, the, the difference between a simple company and a successful company. Your agents are trained. This is number one. Number two, your agents uh, you are still giving them training. You're still investing and want to teach them and coach them and support them uh, throughout um, their work. Yeah. And this is why the team brings huge results. Those who are not supporting the team with the marketing, with the training, with education, of course, they will bring less results. You know, this is just a, an exception when an agent is doing everything on his own. Uh, in fact, he's an entrepreneur already. He's not just an agent. So yes, uh, key to see um, what I believe about sales is that uh, you don't have to be born a salesperson. In fact, yeah, yeah. I don't know if anyone watched uh, the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. The 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 the, the team uh, in the movie uh, they wasn't good, yeah. So Jordan Belfort didn't have the best guys in the world. He just spent a lot of time coaching them. Yeah. So everyone can be coachable if they want to. If people really are open to get knowledge, if people want to learn and they are open to it. But if you hire right people who are uh, open to knowledge and they have the potential to sell, of course, this is gonna be just faster. Yeah, you're gonna get results maybe in the same month. If you hire people who are less mo motivated, who have less knowledge, you just need to spend more time. Anyhow, you're going to get results if you're going to coach and train them. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're right. And we agree on this at the first time we, we met that the successful uh, business is about the right people and educated yeah. people and the right marketing. <coughs> Should I go on my own? Oh, this is a nice one. So is it a great time to start your own business uh, in real estate? Um, I think it's a great time, but I think the the key question really for a lot of people is, is it right right for that person? Yes, it's right for some people. Um, is it is it right for you? There are a lot of things really you need to take into account. Um, running your own business is different. You know, if you're a very successful real estate agent and you want to start your own business, it's a it's a different set of skills. So I think you know there are questions that you need to to ask because the best mechanic doesn't make the best carriage owner, the best real estate agent at the time doesn't make 
the best business owner because that is a different set, set of skills that you you have. Um, and I think, so it's, we'll run through here and kind of give some ideas of from, from our experience where we see the success has been and what it is, but it comes down to the character of, of you yourself and what you're ready to do and what you're prepared to do and the process that you need to, to go through. Um, the first thing really that, that is a key part of it is the business planning and research. Um, and again, this is like a, a key component of, of my job and what I do with a speaker because at times people will come to me and say, okay, I want to I wanna look at, at starting my own business. I, I, I want to take a franchise. I want to look at, you know, what the opportunity is. And I think when you see a lot of people think, you know what, I'm just going to jump in there. It's massively important from a planning and research. First thing is, it's going to tell you how much money you need to invest. And the next question from that is, have you got that money to invest? Or can you make a plan to get that money to invest? It maybe not be now, maybe six months. You know, maybe I'm going to start saving, maybe I'm going to do this. This is a plan that I've got. Research is about what is going to make your business different from everybody else. In some ways, you've got to think about you know, where am I going to put my effort? Am I going to be commercial? Is this where I'm, you know, where I'm going to go? Is this going to be residential? Am I going to be massively strong in leasing? Am I going to be strong in sales? Am I going to do a mixture of all? And where I see kind of most people don't, where they don't have a focus, is they'll say, you know what, I'm going to do Dubai. Well, you can't specialize in Dubai, for example. You go from Merdiff down to DIP, industrial park, investment park. That's a lot of kilometers to cover. And you can't be an expert in all of that. You need to think really about focus. If you're going to look at off plan, am I going to sell off plan to overseas investors? How am I going to get overseas investors? So again, you can look at putting a plan together. I see people who will work in certain markets, CIS uh, countries, Russia, et cetera, or, uh, European countries, sometimes where they have an affiliation. And what they work best is putting on presentations in the local country and they network with local agents, for example. So they look at a project that's good commissions, they can split commissions with the local agent who've got access to high net worth individuals, they can put presentations together. And some of the uh, developers are going to support you with the marketing. But you need to put that business plan together and do the research so you understand how am I going to be different? Where am I going to make my money? Am I going to dominate Arabian ranches? What's my plan to do that? And this is what you are supporting with, right? When you yeah. help, you, you make a franchise. So when you, you meet the future franchises, so I stick with supporting on it. Like you make an analysis, you make a research and uh, explain them how it works. Yeah. Because in terms of uh, like, if, if you ask me if I want to like go on your own, you have to really understand that uh, being an entrepreneur, being a businessman, it's about insecureness and instability yeah so if you have fun about it if you enjoy it then it's your thing if you want to have a nine to six job if you want to you know um, spend a lot of time with your family <laughs> you know uh, have a lot of free time and travel that's not about entrepreneur yeah mostly in real estate at least not not, not for first couple of years yeah like first couple of years entrepreneurship is like 24 7 work so first, this question need to understand, am I ready for this kind of instability? Do I have enough resources? You're right. Do I have enough money to survive, to support my family and to support my business? Yeah, like, and look at the business planning and see, okay, do I have enough money to invest not only in office and team and also in marketing to promote myself, to promote my team? Uh, another thing is that, Am I a good entrepreneur? Am I a good manager? If I'm weak at something, so you get somebody who is strong at it. Yeah. So like uh, people who, let's yeah. say uh, you are like how I have a partner, right? Who, who is good at something and I'm good at managing teams. So he said, Let, let's get together and build a team where you can support me at what I'm weak and I'm going to support you at what you, you don't know. Yeah. So like, it can be another way so you can go into partnership with someone who is good at what you are weak 
but it's very important to be cautious about your strengths and weaknesses rather than you know go blinded because you know now it's very popular to, to be an entrepreneur like it's a fancy thing to have a business so it's very good to be awake and clearly understand like am i good for that and no and of course to look at numbers and to understand will i be able to handle it uh, luckily now, honestly, I like the fact that now in UAE, there is uh, VAT, there are tax, people start counting money, people start looking at their numbers. Before it was completely different, yeah, like around 10 years ago in Dubai, people were just started building businesses, they never get, get an accountant, they were just getting income, spending it. And they didn't really know, in fact, is it profitable or not, yeah, so... Uh, but before running into a business, we need to know numbers. We need to know if it works. We need to know if we have the resources. We need to know if the business model is profitable overall, margins are fine. What are the sales and what are the amount of employees we need to have to achieve a result? Uh, what are the efforts we need to give to achieve results that we need? And also to set our expectations, yeah? So like, I'm gonna get profits after one year until then, there is no profits so how do i survive one year how do i pay salaries and so on and so on yeah so uh running into a business it's about mathematics and it's about the mindset to be a right person for that okay so what does it take to be a successful business leader and i think um yuli you can take this one to start with because you've had seven years uh, so you, you you learn things the hard way yeah, way. I learned it in a hard way because I was young and uh, for me to be a leader at the beginning was to be a dictator, to shout at everyone and say, do how I want. Obviously, this doesn't work. Yeah. So to be a successful business leader, you have to be a thought leader. People have to actually love you, to believe in you. They have to have the same visions with you and you have to spread um your vision to explain what you want to be an honest person uh, i think it's a lot about values people love uh, to work with someone who has the right values yes so like to be an honest to be fair to be decent uh to be ready to share whenever is good and it's bad time right like now i saw a lot of um uh, pictures in, in you know in internet when they were saying that before you go to work on someone check if they were paying salaries in lockdown yeah so like people want to work with someone who make them feel safe and who support them yes yeah? so being a leader is being supportive being ready to take responsibility for your team and to lead with your example like i can say from my experience um people wanted to work with me and want to work with me in future as well because I show that I'm professional. I show that I know my business very well and then they want to you know, learn from me and they want to deal with this kind of people. People don't want to work with unprofessional, um, with a huge ego, <laughs> with you know people who are arrogant and so on so a true leader is not a, a manager is not always a true leader uh, to have a successful business you have to be a leader that people want to work with I like giving an example of uh, Elon Musk because he's an amazing leader everyone loves him he he has this uh, charisma he, he's smart people see that he does crazy nice things and he is very dedicated uh, he uh, he motivates everyone around he works by the way in the open space with all the team yes yeah? so people are enjoying spending time next to him so if you want to have your business successful you have to be um this kind of person also very important is that a leader can't manage a team from the spreadsheets yeah you can't be a leader by being closed in your cabinet and uh, just you know check the reports this doesn't work you have to be with your team you have to be you know like in a football you have to run on the on the stadium along with your team otherwise it doesn't really work that well and I think there's a there's a great saying you just mentioned, which I think is you know a, a manager does things right, but a leader does the right thing. And I think you know being a leader is actually quite rewarding as well when you see how you can develop and get and the people grow. You know, people do want to to work in an environment where they feel you know they they've got they can achieve what they want, self actualization, 
it's kind of one of the key motivations uh, that drives us when we go through, you know, I've got security, I've got job, I can do, you know, I can, I've got, I can pay for my home. And now, you know, I can actually improve myself and, and go where I want to go. And I think it's also important to point out that when you, when people, we all come across these people who think are dictators, etc. we kind of create an environment of fear and, and a human response, our nature, our natural response to fear is we move away from it. So, yeah. you know, if you want to create that, that environment of fear in a job, though, eventually people will find another job. Eventually people, you know, they will move away from it. And yeah. I think, you know, from my own personal experience as well, um, in the past, uh, before I moved to Dubai, managing a team of, of 30 people, but to see, you know, the motivation that, that came into that team and the, and, and the actual results on the bottom line, because happy staff, motivated staff are going to make a difference to your profit. They're going to go beyond the little bit, you know, the, the, what they would normally do. So I think it's, um, it's a massively key point to really understand what a business leader is. And uh, there's a, it's not about being a big personality. I think it's about being intelligent. No, no. It's about understanding each of your staff, making them think that they are an individual, you know, to you. And, you, you know, you will get their loyalty and they're going to help you out and they're going to make your business a success. Yeah, and when you're a leader, you don't need, you know, to push your team to do tasks. You don't need to follow up on emails. You don't need to make sure they're done. They're going to do it by, by themselves because they're going to be excited and fascinated about the work, you know. Yeah. Next. <laughs> it's really, I think, to summarize that um, on what we're saying, if you've got what it takes on that and a business leader, I think people have to, you know, you, it can be extremely rewarding. Um, to be involved and create your own business, uh, rewarding for you, rewarding from your family. But I think everybody knows that not every business is successful. Uh, usually they, they're not successful because they run out of cash. You need to have a strong plan. You need to understand where your focus is. You need to set the goals. You've really got to, to have that determination that you're gonna, you're gonna make this a success and give it everything. Yeah, and also it's about understanding the strengths and weaknesses, yeah? So like to understand yeah. with whom you work or like if, if you you see that you're weak at the branding and stuff, you can buy a franchise for, from a stick and they're going to support you. So it's about finding right people to put around to have um, a, a correct set of skills within your team and within your business. And I think then from that, what skills do uh, will I need to learn? And I think, again, taking a look at yourself, you've got to do that. And there are plenty of, plenty of sources that you can learn if you think, okay, I need to understand um, leadership skills. I did a course, again, a refresher course earlier this year, which was great. And again, like we spoke about sales as a profession, then leader is exactly the same thing. Being a leader is also a profession, and these are things that we can study, we can learn. There are great books out there, a lot of books out there, and I think I would urge people to get recommendations on the books. And I know Julia gives me some recommendations and vice versa, we read the book. Um, you know, maybe we can look at if you can find a mentor as well. It's a great thing in there, which I know some people do, and I know that you, Julia, mentor people. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so there are plenty of uh, options in terms of getting the skills that you need to you need to learn and I think you know the big one is to, to think about the leadership and because the business I, and the research. I have cases when you know a company hired me for uh, coaching their sales team yeah and I joined the company I see that the sales team is completely fine they're good they, they know how to do their job they know how to sell well yeah there are some tunes that need to be done but overall that the thing is fine but the management, they don't have the leadership. They don't know how to manage the team. They don't know how to properly manage the resources, the team, what they have. So it's not only the sales team who has to be coached or only the marketing team. It's also the management sometimes. And when you're a manager, you have to be responsible for uh, being professional and to get the set of skills that you need to know. So if you feel that you're lacking it, there is so much free information online or there are so many books that can be learned. So, and again, it's about values. Uh, every manager has to have right values. Yeah, if you have right values, you're gonna deliver them in the market, in the team. Because like, 
what uh, what is one of the biggest problem in real estate in dubai people agents closing deals on the side yeah this is one of the biggest <laughs> this is what's happened uh, agents close deals on the side because they are unethical usually because the management is unethical to them if the management uh, provides a proper uh, leadership if uh, they are a team if the team is supported by the uh, uh, by the management they won't do that yeah they won't even need to to close deals on the side because they're, they're going to be happy and enough motivated inside of the team if the management uh, is unfair it's um, um, unethical with their team then this kind of situation happens okay on the next subject, information is key to making the right decisions. And again, this is something I come across so often being involved in, in uh, real estate in this region is that people actually really don't know much about their business and they don't really manage or have the information which is key to making decisions. And I can give you an example outside of the industry. If you want to look at supermarkets, supermarkets absolutely know their business and information they know exactly what sells from what shelf. Why do they need to know that? Because they're gonna to go to one of their suppliers and say, you know what, I'm gonna give you this shelf and you're gonna sell more product, but you need to give me a discount. Okay, so they're using it to make money. Where, what's relevant to real estate? It's about understanding, for example, what's the benefit of the market I've done? So if I'm spending money on marketing, is it working? Am I getting this, uh, the return on this and you'll see many companies don't they just blindly decide i'm going to spend i need to spend on this portal i need to spend on that portal i need to spend on this so these guys end up spending tens of thousand dirhams each month and then find if they actually did some research so they're probably not capturing you know 80 percent of the leads and you know they're, they're spending all this money they're not getting the the, the data it's not being logged they don't know where the deals are coming from. They don't know if it's value for spend. They don't know, you know, how these guys perform. Mm -hmm. And we'll come on to that a little bit in the next subject, which we call decomposition. But I think the investment in the right system as part of the business plan, you need to, to have that and how you're going to um, make sure you, you, you uh, capture this information because it's really, really, really key to, for you to make decisions where you're going to spend money and what's working, you know, how the guys are performing, et cetera, et cetera. And also, uh, if we talk about information in terms of information about your clients, like if you're a sales representative or you're into sales, because I see we, we have in chat people from, from sales as well. So when you're into sales, your information is all in CRM, yeah? Like you have all uh, the data in your CRM system. You have all the contacts, all your leads, all the preferences and so on. So as much information you have about your client, the more likely you're gonna close them, the more likely you're gonna you know, succeed at your career, at your job. And also the more amount of information about the clients, it gives the possibility to the company, to the marketing team to promote their, um, to their business and their marketing you know, more. Let, let's say if we talk about having a perfect you know we all know the parallel rule yeah like we close uh, 80 percent of deals for 20 percent of clients yeah if we know who are these 20 percent if we have this information so we can target them we can get more of them maybe we don't spend so much money on dubizel and, and we just target this certain uh, area of clients that we need so of course this information gives actually information it's it's power always yeah like the more information you have the more powerful you are this is why facebook and google are so powerful right now because they have all information in the world and they can manage it in the in the most uh, comfortable way in the most valuable way to them so uh, it's it's a shame that in uh, real estate agents they don't like to to input the information they they don't really enjoy using crm but we all need to understand this is the very, very important um, subject that need to be always uh, used in, in any business. Actually, I don't imagine a sales team now without a proper CRM input and, you know, of information. It's very important. I heard a great story, a great example. One, one, uh, one company was doing this, I'm looking at this, and they had an Irish agent. And they looked at it all and worked out 
the Irish agent was really bad at closing deals with Irish clients, but he was very good at closing deals with German clients. So they gave him all the German clients. Yeah. And he closed more deals. Yeah, 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 of course. It, this is and I think, you know, it, to put it in context of other businesses as well, you know, there's a massive, massive market, or employment market, and people um, think about, uh, you know, the data that's there, the bank's data, and like you said, Google, everyone does it. So I think it's, it's massive issue. But that's very well. We'll move on to the next one. I think this is the final bit, which is understanding decomposition. Um, again, what this is about, what we talk about in the real estate uh, industry is um, understanding what happens. So we, uh, is to manage your leads and to understand what's happening from leads to help guys do it. So I think we can probably just summarize it on that is decomposition is about understanding uh, what happens to your leads when they come in and where they go and how they get converted. And it's a great tool to help you understand how your agents are performing. So I think on that one, um, from a time constraint now, we're, we're at the end of that. Okay, yeah, good. So if there is any questions, we can answer. Hi, so that's been a great session, I guess, for all of you. Um, I think for everyone of, of any experience level, they would have something to take away from the webinar. Uh, we have received a few questions, uh, you know, through the, through the course of the webinar. Um, I'll be reading them out one by one. So we, our first question is from Farooq, and he's asking if, um, so do you think the, the real estate staff agent must know about architects? I'm gonna answer, yeah. Uh, I don't think the architect aspect is uh, main and is vital. I would say that more important is knowledge of the product itself, you know, like building, uh, area, surroundings, whatever is related to the deal. Um, also, of course, sales knowledge. I don't think that um, knowing the architects will really affect the performance. So it's, it's not like the, the main, main thing as of me. Um, so I think that that question is answered, Farooq. Um, right. So uh, let's, let's move on to the next question from Ashmit. Um, so Ashmit is a, is a fresher in the real estate, um, real estate market and He's just joined um, uh, sales and leasing. He's just joining as a sales and leasing consultant. So mm -hmm. um, he would like to know if uh, you have any suggestions for him, you know, uh, to expand his knowledge base from scratch, you know, so books to read, videos to watch. From Ashmit. Okay, in terms of um, in terms of that, complete pressure to real estate. There's two things here. One is to understand sales, which is what we've done now, and there are great sources to uh, to um, uh, learn about sales as a profession and that you know it can be in real estate or it can be in another industry um, I would recommend for example uh, Udemy U-D-E-M-Y is an online university course and for example Julia's got her um, sales uh, training videos on there and they run some great promotion where you can pick up sales courses for five dollars so you can learn about that I think about the real estate that's knowledge about real estate itself. I think that um, you really, um, when we talk to agents, if you're looking at how they're going to specialize in an area, you need to really go along and understand that area. So you can look at the buildings that you're going to work on, you can connect, you can network locally, you can talk to businesses, um, you can, um, for example, it's going to somebody look at Arabian ranches, you can go down there, speak to all the businesses that are there. And start trying to understand the area and the, uh, itself, and what the good points are, what the bad points are. Yeah, can I add to that? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so here is question about books and videos. Um, yeah. I'm I'm good at books. <laughs> so in terms okay. of authors for um, for sales, I like uh, Grant Cardone. He's a sales coach. And he is also a real estate developer. So his um, coach our coaching is very good for uh, real estate and sales. Um, Grant Cardone and uh, Jordan Belfort. He's also, he has some nice books. So learning the straight line uh, sales techniques. Yes, and of course my course uh, is also good for real estate agents because this is my main experience. But overall, yes, uh, the good, good thing is that you, asked about 
uh, learning, yeah? So any sales job has to be taken in such a way that you learn about your profession, yeah? While you learn, while you research, while you um, try to improve, this is a good thing, yeah? And obviously, for real estate, it's very important to attend all these events that are done by developers, yeah? So like you learn about developers, you learn what are the new product on the market, what are competitors offering, uh, what are you dealing with, yeah? So the more information you have, the more uh, professional you look, yeah? So whenever you meet a client, you, you can say, yes, I know about that. Yes, I know about that. Yes, I, I was on, uh, on that building. Yes, I, I know the area. Yes, I've been in that kind of apartment. So this will bring you more um, credibility. Yeah, we don't like dealing with agents who are like, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know about the area. I don't know how much is it, and so on. You have to know Dubizel by heart. You have to know all developers what they have and what which buildings are are coming up, and so on and so on. Yeah. So right is to learn about sales and to learn about the market as much as possible. And, and one more thing, focusing on a certain area, yeah, like uh, agents like to be focused, like I'm a palm specialist, I'm, I'm a GLT specialist. Uh, I would recommend to do this while, when you already worked a certain amount of time, yeah, like when you already have an experience and due to the database you already have, then you pick a certain area, yeah, like I have a lot of clients on the palm, so I'm going to focus only on the palm. Yeah, don't push yourself to certain areas which you uh, might not be good. Yeah, so like you gave the example, he was closing more Deutsch uh, clients. So of course you go there where you're more successful, not where you think that you would like to. Yeah, do something that you're good at. Right, so I think that has uh, answered his question. Um, let's move on to the next, uh, next one. We have a question from uh, Yelena to Yulia. So with regards, she's asking with regards to the existing staff, what do you suggest um, for maintaining their motivation levels during the, uh, these roller coaster times? Uh, yes. Um, see, there are different types of motivation. Yeah. Um, there is not only financial. And this is very important because um, people, for, people are always focusing on paying more money rather than uh, actually understanding what people need. Yeah, sometimes uh, people are motivated just by having a proper support, uh, by a proper call, a conversation, yeah? So you need to understand what is important to your uh, team and give it to them. I'll give you some examples to, to ma make it clear. For, for example, I am a, an achievement type of person, yeah? So I need to have achievements so this is how i get mo motivated or i'm also i like to be recognized yeah if i do, if i'm paid doesn't matter how much i'm paid but if my manager doesn't tell me that i'm good uh, i'm demotivated yeah so to somebody it's very important to tell him like you're great you're amazing you know do the job uh, you're you're doing amazing so this is gonna be a big motivation and of course we need to talk uh, to every person face to face and discuss what are they paying, how we can support them. A good motivation now, it's the it's a sales training. Yeah, like I noticed that while I'm training people, yeah, so uh, when they start the training, they're very, you know, they, they're afraid, everyone are afraid, even I'm afraid uh, to, uh, because nobody knows what will happen. But uh, when you have somebody who, believes in that everything can work everything gonna be fine so this kind of give you energy to uh, to perform better and i think add to that i think many people under the illusion that money is is, is the biggest motivator in terms of what it is and the, the quick thing to that is if you you know if somebody if your boss doubles your salary you're going to work twice as hard it's probably impossible to work twice as hard I think what you have to be aware of with money is it's more of a demotivator at times than a, than a motivator. If you find out somebody doing the same job as you paid more, you're demotivated. So I think there's a point where we, you know, we're happy with what we earn. And what more importantly is, based on that, if you look at the research, the, the motivational hierarchical needs, that's what we is. We want to be recognised, we want to be achieved, we want to do this. And that's really what is 
the key, and I think managers forget, is just having that conversation and telling people you're doing a great job. Yeah, and to be close to your team, yeah. Th this is very important. Hope you have, uh, we have answered your question, Yelena. Uh, we have one more question from Phil, and he asks us if uh, we would agree that all, all top sales consultants share one key attribute as a foundation of their success, and that is being a people person. Definitely, yes. All companies that care about their clients, they are being successful. And about the team as well, yeah? Like, you have to care about two things as a manager, about your team to, to be happy and about your clients to be happy. If you don't... Uh, if you don't make them happy you want success yeah and i think everyone knows from the research that those companies that take care of their clients with good customer service and after sales customer service are more successful yeah more referrals better image better reputation this is why people buy fr fr franchises yeah this is the reason why because a company take care of their clients, companies well known, and people want to profit for, from it. And they, they take the name and they take care of their clients. So the name is very important. The, your outside image is very important. People buy, um, let's say, for example, people don't even uh, have doubts buying phones, yeah, iPhones, because they know that Apple is providing a perfect service, the phones are working perfectly, and everything is sharp there, yeah. So when you uh, focus on the customer's uh, experience. So this is where the success is. Yeah, I'm agree. All right. I think uh, we have answered all our questions. We can um, uh, we can have a few more minutes for any 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 more uh, questions that are coming in. Okay, guys. All right. I think uh, that's it for today. Um, let's uh, wind up. Our next webinar will be hosted on. Um, 20th next Thursday and we will have Morgan who will be teaching us about virtual property management uh, and I hope you all can um, join us that day. Okay. So um, see you all and have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you Thank for you. your attention. Thank you Keith. Thank you Yulia for, for this wonderful webinar. Let's wind up this webinar.